warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, happy people. Welcome to Man Alat Podcast. With me, Sapira Masa, and here with three of my friends, Arku, but sadly they are still single. Ardi, Nadia, and Rory. Say hello to camera, please. Hello. hello. Okay. What's up, guys? I'm good. Okay. Nowadays, as we can see, there just a few people, or we can say the millennial people, that can speak with local language. So today in this podcast, I want to interview with three of my friends about preserved vernacular as a heritage. What do you think, guys, about using the local language in the dialect? Mm-hmm. Yes. According to me, using local language in daily life is not a big deal. It's okay. Even it could be an obligation. So as long as there is no regulation from government that prohibit us to use local language in daily life, why not? Okay. Why you say that is obligation? Yeah, because, for example, in certain areas in Indonesia, usually the remote areas, the people in there is not using Bahasa as their main language. They are more likely to use their mother tongue. So, for who wants to go to there, they should to learn and use their language to be able to communicate with them. So, that's why I say it could be an obligation. Okay, I see. Are they say using and learning local language it could be obligation? Nadia, what is your response to Ardi's statement? Uh, I agree with Ardi's statement that it can be obligation. When we learn and using our local language in daily life, it means we have to preserve our culture. Especially in millennial era like now, when uh, the young people prefer to using slangs and etc. Yeah. And Surely, this reduces our uh, cultural value of our language. And so, when we learn and using our local language in daily life, then we have to keep our cultural heritage. Okay, I got it. So, according Ardi and Nadia's statement, that using and learning local language is called obligation, right? Yes, right. We have to preserve our culture. Okay. Uh, I think you all know that uh, vernacular is important to our country identity. But also using vernacular has both bad and good impact. Of course. Uh, can I talk about this? Yes. Okay. For the let's talk about the positive impact first. Um, for the positive impact, using vernacular uh, can improve our familiarity with people, and then can. Tighten our friendship, and the most thing can make us more closer. Uh, because I have an experience when I was on junior high school, not in Eastern Indonesia. Uh, I met the people that comes from place that same as me, uh, Eastern Indonesia. Uh, he's, he is from uh, Maluku, and I'm from Nusa Tenggara. But we talk with the same accent, uh, Indonesian language, but the eastern yeah. accent so we felt like an old friend like about five or six years friend but we just met about you know one week or a month so it can tighten it can improve our familiarity more faster okay that is positive side how about the negative side about the negative side um miscommunication can you give me an example of course because i have experienced it a lot um, when I was in Central Java about 2016 or 17, my whole family goes to uh, Central Java. Uh, people there just talking using Japanese, uh, especially the older people, and they don't understand any Indonesian. So when the time people gather and they started um, talking Isar, they just using Japanese and. I'm the only one that don't understand Japanese, so <laughs> when they were telling a story, I, I just go in and take a look at the man or a, a person who was telling stories and I just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. so that's pretty embarrassing, you know, and yeah, that's all. Okay, I get it. Uh, so good impact, it can uh, count it our 
culture and the bad one is if we go to other place it can be miscommunication because we were uh, different language right okay. uh, nowadays usage of vernacular is decreasing so what should you do so that vernaculars do not extend from Ardi? in my opinion because this is a cultural heritage that must be preserved I want the government I want the government in each region to make a regulation which is in a week there is at least one day that used as local language day where on the day all communication must use local language so the young generation will not forget their language okay that's Nadia uh, according to me to preserve our vernacular we can start by our family uh, because I believe we can if we used to Okay, that is Nadia Pires. How about you? Uh, for me, uh, still in Central Java. Yeah, again? Uh, people's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, schools there put Japanese language as a subject. So the young the young people yeah, and in school can learn Indonesian and Japanese at the same time. So they understand both Japanese and Indonesian. So when I talk to the youngster, young people, we can use Indonesia because they have already learned it in school and it's a big success. Uh, why don't other regions put that as a subject in school too? Because it's a big success in Java. Why don't in other place too? Of course, it's in their local language. Okay. That's right. I got it. That's our very opinion from all of you and on our topic today. Okay guys, so from our discussion today, I invite all of viewers, especially the millennial people to come on, preserve our vernacular without leaving Indonesian language as the national unifying language. Thanks for your time and thanks for your opinion. Okay guys, that's all our podcast today. Don't forget to like and share this video and don't forget to follow our Instagram in the description below. See you the next time. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.